Hey everybody, uh, before we get into uh, the visit to the distillery for this week, uh, we are going to, at the end of this episode, we are going to review uh, The Last Jedi. So, uh, before we, uh, so, so this is the spoiler free section of, it, of, of the whole review, but uh, once that's over, uh, if you have not seen Star Wars The Last Jedi, uh, you may want to press stop. Yeah, uh, click it's away gonna, now. It's, it's going to be, well, no, don't click away now. Click away when, uh, when the, <laughs> after the visit to yeah. the distillery. So, uh, anyways, uh, just a few predictions. Uh, I have a few predictions. I, uh, I believe that because the Star Wars mythos always has, every generation flips uh, to the other side. Uh, Darth Vader's uh, father, was, uh, 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 Darth Vader's son was Luke Skywalker. Uh, you know, Kylo Ren's father was Han Solo. Uh, I believe that Rey's father is going to be Emperor Palpatine. So uh, that's my <laughs> prediction. And uh, just because it follows the Star Wars mythos. So uh, you have any predictions? Not that I can think of, but I know it's going to be an exciting film. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I believe that Mickey Mouse is Snoke, but I... I, I yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. So anyways, um, and, and BB-8 is, is Rey's long-lost brother. I don't know how that works out, but yeah. So, uh, anyways, on to uh, the distillery tour, and uh, we'll see you in a bit with a spoiler-filled review of Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Nerds Drink Whiskey. Uh, now, uh, we go from uh, the biggest distillery in the Northwest to uh, this is what Handcrafted is all about. Uh, very small operation. Uh, you got you got one guy taking care of it, and it's, it, is, it is very handcrafted, very, uh, uh, very personable. Uh, if, you, if you can take a quick pan around here, if you don't mind, uh, take a quick pan. This is, this is why we do the show, is to find distilleries like this. This is the entire distillery. This is it. And uh, so this is, uh, it makes it very personal, uh, you know, as opposed to a big, huge factory where you're doing it in mass. Uh, this is, uh, you know, much smaller operation. So there's much more care, much more love brought into it. And uh, this, to me, it makes it, makes it kind of special. So uh, we got, uh, you're, you're one of the owners. Yeah. Okay. And uh, why don't you, how long have you guys been around? And uh, just tell us a little bit about uh, Nightside. So I started this place uh, almost coming on five years ago. Uh, it was an uh, idea of passion. I was uh, making some apple pie and uh, had a lot of friends. Face yeah. People. Oh, okay. So I, sorry about that. I had, I had a lot of friends asking me for my apple pie as, as I was developing it in my kitchen, kind of like a lot of people would, um, buying alcohol and mixing it together. Uh, I got to the point where I thought, hey, with uh, all these new laws and stuff, I'm going to make my own alcohol. It'll be better quality, uh, better flavor, and, and uh, it'll be more personal. It'll be mine. Well, after be about a year of being in this location with actually that little 15 gallon still up in the corner, um, I realized that rent was about all you could produce out of a little still like that you know and it, it, it was time to grow so I looked around a little bit found uh, some guys that were coming through wanted to start their own distillery also so now I have uh, partners um, Ray Mike and Steve are my partners they're not here today but uh, we, we all have day jobs and then we all put our passion into this business here and uh, we keep it growing uh, for for being as small as we are and as local as we are um, we see a lot of growth um, in this area and a lot of community support which is really nice uh, we've uh, we went from the two base products um, I know you don't want to hear about the vodkas but we had an apple pie and a, and a vodka and those are our two base products and and then since then we've grown to numerous products uh, and then our latest of course is our, our bourbon which we released I believe it was uh, July late July early August uh, as a one-year aged uh, bourbon uh, the stuff we have moving forward is getting into 18 months two years uh, and then we'll be soon barreling in bigger barrels hoping to get that that four-year plus bourbon out that very mature um, nicely aged bourbon uh, right now though the bourbon that we have is uh, uh, this this recipe this this uh, um, 
aging of it has already taken a silver medal with ADI. So, um, you know, it has proven itself in the flavor. We'll just be glad to get a little, little more age on it, but it is definitely a, a real nice, bold, uh, smooth, uh, good texture to the mouth bourbon. Okay. Uh, now, uh, so how about if we uh, throw up a couple shots of the bourbon, give, us, give it a try, and uh, let's, uh, let's review this. Uh, our uh, camera person right there is going to get a good shot of this bottle here, and uh, so this is uh, this is a 90 proof. Uh, it's uh, corn, Washington corn, so locally uh, locally sourced produce, and uh, yeah, and uh, it's uh, it is bourbon. So yes, yeah, so it's it's a uh, it's about a 70 percent corn. And then we also do uh, have rye, the malted barley. And then one of the things that we put in a little different is we also follow it up with there's uh, about a 5% mixture of oats in there, some rolled oats. It really gives the mouth a nice texture and feel. Okay. All right, well, here we go. We're going to try Nightside Bourbon. This has not been aged long, has it? About a year. About a year. A okay. Year this is a one-year aged version, and you're saying that uh, uh, you're looking at uh, aging some of it more uh, and and getting uh, bigger, so you can have a, a different different stages of, of the bourbon uh, with with a little bit better age on it. Right. Absolutely. So the stuff we release now, it was just it was that time. It, it finally came to the maturity level where where it was a good tasting bourbon. Um, and and people could be happy to drink it and and one year you wouldn't want it any any younger than that but now the stuff we have currently is already up into 18 months and the we're, we're hoping if supplies last and we can push it out that the next release will be a two-year aged in a 15 gallon barrel moving into 30 gallon barrels that'll be two year plus aging on that okay yeah this uh, definitely I mean I'd say even now uh, maybe with a good ice cube uh, definitely a good mixing bourbon uh, what, what do you guys think um, yeah, I can honestly agree with you. I think uh, I think with an ice cube, it would actually uh, it'd be uh, pretty good as a mixing bourbon, or um, you know, um, yeah, it's it's really not that bad. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say definitely uh, it, it'll be nice to see what happens uh, with a little bit more aging in there. But uh, yeah, what 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 do you think? Oh, so I think you guys are like talking about how the 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 finish and the mouth and the bite at the end needs some polish. Um, but as far as that goes, this is actually, for a one-year-old, it's actually not bad at all. Um, so, yeah, give it another year or three, and it'll be nice and smooth. Uh, I do like the flavor on it. Um, it's got some nice, subtle, like, fruit uh, flavors and some vanilla kind of stuff in there. Um, did you say there was rye in the mix? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you can definitely taste the pepperiness from the rye. Um, so I don't know if you want to, like, you know, a lot of places they would call this a rye because it's got the rye in it. Um, it's not necessary. I could tell that there was rye in there, but um, yeah, I definitely think the flavor is good. And then, yeah, give it a couple of years and it'll be top notch. And yeah, the honestly, I, we've had worse finishes on older stuff. So it's, it's good. That's not a fair assessment. We've had worse finishes on very expensive older stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to say anything? Uh, basically, I, aside from just the age, I'm excited to see how this tastes in two or three years because it has a really good flavor it just could use a little age but right now it's great just like it is all right so uh now i'd be interested i'd be interested to taste uh maybe a different if you ever wanted to kind of branch off on your on your whiskeys or your bourbons uh i'd like to see what this tasted like without the rye um i'm not totally against rye actually uh one of my favorite uh local distilleries uh makes in my opinion the best rye i've ever found but i think the the rye mixed with the lower age the rye kind of it kind of makes it a more the, the bite a little bit it, it kind of ruins the bite a little bit now that same thing will i think benefit it 
as it gets older, I think the rye would actually help that. And and you'd get a you'd get it actually make a make it a better bite. But uh, with the lower age, I'd be real interested to see what this this your your recipe here would taste like, but without the rye. But uh, other than that, uh, good show for your 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 one whiskey. And uh, is there any uh, any closing comments you have for the uh, what was that? Oh oh yes yes yes. So uh, uh, now this is going to be aired after uh, Christmas, but. Uh, uh, we know you got a, you got a, you got probably a lot of Christmas bills you're paying off, uh, and and you know maybe it'd be nice to have um, maybe something for yourself, maybe uh, something to help pay off that that Christmas bill. So uh, we're gonna give you a five dollar Amazon gift certificate, and all you got to do is be the first comment on this episode on our Facebook page, and all you got to do is include one word in your post. It's got to include the one word. So first post at, that includes the, the word, the keyword, and that keyword is nightside. Nightside. So uh, make a post, include the word nightside, be first to do that, and we will get you a five dollar Amazon gift certificate. So uh, remember, always sip, never slam. See you next week, Nerds Drink Whiskey. This episode is sponsored by Pour Grinds, now made with real porgs. All right, hey everybody, uh, we just got back from uh, Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Um, none of my, uh, my my big prediction uh, it, it hasn't panned out yet. Um, I they they say that they uh, they revealed who. And by the way, uh, uh, spoilers ahead from here on out. Uh, we've warned you uh, there's going to be spoilers, and my glasses are reflecting horribly, so I'm taking them off. Um, so major spoilers from here on out. You've been warned. Uh, Kylo Ren says that, uh, you know, she's just, you know, her parents were just junkers. Um, I think that was BS. I think that uh, over time we're gonna. I think in the next film maybe uh, they'll they will reveal, and I still think that it, that Emperor Palpatine is her father. Um, but uh, other than that, the movie overall, uh, I think it was. Uh, I think you mentioned good balance of funny and drama. Yeah. Um, I think the script could have been a little better. I think they went for too many tropes. Um, I was pleased to see that it wasn't just a rehash of Empire Strikes Back, That's like a Force true. Awakens was a rehash of A New Hope. Um, I don't know what, what what's your thoughts. Well, to be perfectly honest, when it came down to it, uh, you know, I was uh, I was pleasantly surprised with the movie. Um, I thought that uh, you know it it could have been a little bit better, like you said, um, as far as uh, the script goes. Um, uh, I've noticed that at least in my opinion, uh, they they really really what I call Disney fight it, um, as far as, uh, the comedic value, um, there were, you know, a lot of, you know, kind of a little bit of slapstick moments in yeah, there. The good, um, some good one liners. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, and Star Wars has always had that. I mean, it, uh, in the, in the first trilogy, Han Solo delivered most of them, let's face it, yeah. but, uh, Harrison Ford, but, uh, uh, that the comedy has always been an element of Star Wars. And I think that's why, uh, uh, some people like Star Wars, and as opposed to Star Trek, is is uh, Star Trek doesn't really have that that humor value as much as Star Wars uh, does. Uh, I still say, um, as soon as I saw the Porgs, I knew I wasn't going to like them, um, and I still say that, uh, that we should fry up all the Porgs and eat them for dinner uh, because there is absolutely there was absolutely no they had no weight on the story at all. Uh, there was no reason for the Porgs. Um, they were basically uh, it looked like bean counters said that we had to have something cute and cuddly to sell uh, to little kids. Yep. That's pretty much the only reason for the porgs. There was they didn't even try and make them integral to the story. No. So uh, uh, for that, uh, I was kind of disappointed that they that they shoehorn that one in. They it was kind of forced down your throat, um, and, it, and and I would have liked to have seen instead of constantly creating new characters, I would have liked to have seen. Uh, a recurrence of some of the old characters that we know and love. Um, yeah. They just seem so set on creating new characters. And uh, I think that that's uh, to the detriment of, of the, the franchise um, and to the story overall. So I don't know. Um, I still say it's worth a view. 
but uh, it's uh, I do think the writers were um, it kind of it kind of uh, it, it, it happened. I mean, you know, you kind of watch the movie and it's like, well, yeah, okay, it it happened. It it, it it's a you know, if it wasn't Star Wars, it would have been a uh, straight to DVD action flick. Um, you know, I think that I see better sci-fi uh, movies, uh, uh, shorts on YouTube, um, yeah. than I the more well written. So uh, it was good that they didn't just rehash uh, Empire, but I would have liked to uh, liked a little bit more in depth storyline. Um, I uh, think they they kind of went for crutches too much. Um, yeah. I don't know anything else uh, you have to say. Um, you know, I agree with you on the, the pores need to be fried up, at, you know, completely fried up and, uh, you know, given for breakfast, man. That just, uh, they had, in my opinion, they had a little too much screen time. Um, you know, they, they, they try to make it like, you know, with, uh, with Chewbacca going in almost every single shot they, that they had with Chewbacca in there, you know, the Porgs had to come right in with it and yeah. do their own little, their own little, yeah, you know, and it, and it, it, it and you know they say you say too much screen time, and it was only too much screen time because they weren't entangled with the story. Yeah. You know that much screen time. If they did something important to the story, if they had some weight to the story, that much screen time would have been and more screen time would have been would have been great. Yeah. Um, unlike the Ewoks who uh, were entangled with the story and uh, actually uh were a little dark and twisted and you know had an interest in eating human flesh you know that's why i always liked the ewoks whereas uh you know in jar jar binks originally uh it was said that jar jar binks was supposed to be uh a, a, a spy sith and uh that was the original plan for for jar jar binks so i don't know maybe they have a plan for the porgs later that they, they might matter but i think that they just need to be i you know chewbacca again spoilers uh Chewbacca fries one up and then doesn't eat it because he has one crying in front of him. Like the dude's already fried up. Uh, eat it, you know. That's a waste of yeah. food, you Seriously. know. Um, so yeah, two yeah. of them actually. Yeah. Oh, was it two? I thought it was just one. No, but, there was uh, there was one that he had in his hands, and then, then there was one that was still on the rotisserie cooking. Oh, okay, okay, all right, all right, yeah. So, uh, anyways, uh, Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Uh, I'm a little. In, I'm. It was better than I thought it was going to be. But I'm still a little disappointed. I thought the writers were, um, maybe they're planning on something bigger later. But uh, this is definitely not going to be one of my favorites. But it's not going to be one of my least favorites either of the Star Wars uh, uh, series. So, uh, anyways, that's it. Um, and uh, I think now we're going to play a little bit of uh, uh, Where in the World is uh, Ed this week. So, uh, all right. So, uh, Ed. Take it away, and uh, we'll see you next week with another episode of Nerds Drink Whiskey. All right, I'm out digging fossils again. I'm in western Washington, not terribly far from where I grew up, near Olympia. And uh, it's been three or four years since I've been out here, so I'm trying to find the fossil site where I used to dig. All of this was underwater 45 million years ago, something like that. And uh, I'm looking for the site, but as you can see, I'm up in the hills. And uh, it's pretty cool looking out here. The loggers have really taken their toll, so it makes everything look much different than uh, what I remember. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Let's see what we can find. Well, it looks like I found my old spot, but uh, it looks a little different because at some point they probably had a tractor come through here and widen the road and so it's a little different there was a point where i could kind of climb up there and uh, uh quite a few years back i actually dislocated and shattered my elbow doing this but it hasn't stopped me and here i am again let's see what we can find and uh wish me luck all right we've been here for quite a while and we're finding little things here but nothing uh, significant. I usually find more stuff, but like I said, it's been a while and they kind of fouled my digging grounds. I'll give you an idea as to what we're doing here. Basically, these rocks, they're pretty soft. You can bust them up pretty easy. So basically, you just find a rock and you hit it and it breaks. Some of them are harder than others, but some of them not so much. So you dig around, see if you can find anything. Let's see if we can find something with something in it. Let's see if 
thing there. Wow, that's a really hard one. No, that one's softer. But I've been swinging a hammer for almost three hours now, so my arm's getting a little tired. You can see how easy some of these break. and find something with something in it to show you. Some were kind of pre-broken also. Here's something. Right here. It's not much. You can see a shell from some tiny ocean critter. Part of it just fell out. There's another little piece. There's something else that was in there. But we're finding clams and there's these shell things that were kind of like squids with shells and what do we have here I see a little something down in here looks like it was just some sort of shell you find a lot of clam clam shells as well Kara found something that was obviously something that was fossilized but we're not sure what it was and I'll show you that a little bit later but it's a lot of work but I enjoy it see little bits of stuff in there there's some more right in there my hand isn't too shaky sometimes you find crabs see I just broke that off and I don't know where it went that happens and what else do we have that one broke nicely but there's nothing in it same there oh look over here Sometimes you just find stuff. There's a whole bunch of little something there. That could have been a crushed crab or who knows what. So, there's stuff to be found. It's just, uh, I think these grounds just aren't as good as they used to be. So, I feel like I'm on a changing game. Breaking big rocks and the little tiny rocks. I should go to work for LaQuint Dickey. So that's it so far after a little while we will show you here's a car we will show you our treasure you can see these piles over here that we've made there's a bag over here and i have a pocket full of maybe not full but with a few tiny little things in there in fact i'll show you here here's a shell perfectly preserved clam shell that's open see that there's another clam shell not in as good a shape but it's not broken but the uh, outer coatings off it's a broken clam shell but it's cool looking now this I think that's some sort of snail shell but it's cool looking it's pristine this might be a crushed crab <clears throat> This one's kind of large, and I found much larger stuff than what I found today, but I don't know what that is. It almost looks like a trilobite, but I've never seen trilobites out here. I think that's a clamshell. Just a bunch of stuff like that. There's an impression of something. We found it. Of course, it was already like that. Could have been a nodule or maybe even a top of a crab shell. I don't think it was a crab, but there's some other little shells in there. There's a shell. So yeah, we're getting stuff. It's a lot of work, but it's fun. And uh, yeah.